Does everyone have a bulletin and a song sheet? Yes. yes. And hopefully a scripture reading if one has been assigned unto you. As we tried something new for the season of Easter, in the Anglican way, we have shunned it and returned to the old. <laughs> and we will be using a paper bulletin and printed song sheets for the season of Pentecost. And beginning next week, those beautiful lectionary inserts with the scripture written out will appear. Um, an announcement that I'll make before we sing and probably forget that I've made it and make it again at the offertory is that next Wednesday, the 9th of July, I will not be here. We will have a guest preacher. June? It's the 9th of June? June. Yeah. I don't not know why July. I'm in July. Thank you so much. <laughs> June. Um, I will be in South Carolina for the ordination of a very dear friend um, and two classmates and a stranger. So I think it's going to be a wonderful ordination. We will have a guest preacher and celebrant who I still need to confirm that he's good to go, but someone will be here offering glory to God, and it would be wonderful if you were here as well. There will be two people. There will be two. Bob Hooper and Tim O'Leary from St. James, West Hartford. Wonderful. I have not confirmed that. Incidentally, Father Tim O'Leary. Isn't that great? What? Has a Jewish mother. <laughs> So did Jesus. So <laughs> I, I think we're going to be okay. I get a point for that. You do. It's okay. We, we can edit the video. That's, yeah. that's been my, my personal motto for the entirety of COVID. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 540, no, 594, God of Grace and God of Glory. We will sing the first two verses. <laughs>
also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your never-failing providence sets in order all things, both in heaven and earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. From the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 8, verses 4 through 11. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said to him, You are old, and your sons do not follow in your way. Appoint for us then a king to govern us like other nations. But the thing for us, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, Give us a king to govern us. Samuel prayed to the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in all they say to you, for they have rejected you, and they have rejected me from being their king over them just as they have done to me from the day I brought them out of Egypt to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so also they are doing to you. Now then, listen to their voice only. You shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who shall reign over them. So Samuel reported, all the words of the Lord to the people who were asking him for a king. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> a lesson from Second Corinthians chapter four, verses um, thirteen. To, uh, uh, chapter 5 one. Uh, just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture I believe and so I spoke we believe and so we speak because we know that one who, who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace as it extends to more and more people may, incre may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. So for this slight momentary affliction uh, is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what we have, uh, can see, can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if uh, the heavenly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. 
I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. For though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me, your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. And the crowd came together again, so that they could not even eat. When his family heard, heard it, they went to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub. And by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. And, they called them, and he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against its, himself, and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. For no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his, pro his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever, I, and whatever blasphemies they are other. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they have said, He has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came and standing outside. They said to him and called him. A crowd was, was sitting around him. And they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside, asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. I speak to you today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 <clears throat> if given the opportunity to choose a different Gospel passage for today, I would have. <laughs> and I learned in seminary that acknowledging that feeling is important and then pushing to the side and delving into the gospel even more is the next step. So we're gonna do a little bit of investigating on this third chapter of Mark. 
As a small child, my mother tells me that my favorite movie was The Wizard of Oz. That was back during the time of Blockbuster, so every weekend we went to Blockbuster, we rented the tape, <laughs> we watched it four or five times. She can quote every word of the movie. We apparently watched it so much. I don't remember that at all, but pieces of the movie often come to the forefront of my mind. And while researching this particular gospel, I thought about the scene where Dorothy, actually I think it's Toto, sneaks, this is towards the end of the movie, and the dog sneaks back and he pulls the curtain back just a little and you can see the wizard is actually a regular man. And I thought we might do that a little bit with our gospel passage today, or at least with my process for dealing with difficult gospels. It's very easy to stand up here and talk about how wonderful Jesus is, or how God is love, or that beautiful passage, which we will circle back to from today's psalm, the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. You can sing about that all day. But in this passage from Mark, we see 15 verses, which on the sheet looks like this, and not one proper name. In fact, Jesus is not mentioned by name during this entire pericope, this entire portion of the gospel, which I find odd, don't you? Who is it that we're talking about? Who is it that is pressing in, who is the crowd pressing in on? Whose family is coming to restrain him? Who has a demon? I feel like that's important knowledge. So in reading the third chapter of Mark a little bit before and a little bit after, we are talking about Jesus. These crowds are trying to figure out this new teacher, this new prophet, this new healer and preacher. Remember, Mark's gospel goes in order, so the third chapter is at the beginning. Who is this man who can do the impossible? Who is this healer who can do what only God can do. I read an article once that talked about the scientific theory called Occam's Razor. Has anyone heard of that? In short, it's that the simplest explanation is more often than not true. To circle back to that last piece of questioning and gossip, how is it that this healer can do what only God can do? Well, he's God. We've read the whole book, though, so that's an unfair advantage. <laughs> but yeah, we know how the story ends. So in this Gospel of Mark, we have the people of the town really trying to get their bearings and to figure it out. How do demons obey this man? Well, their extension says that he must be one of them. But if we read a little bit before and we read a little bit after, there is an instance in... Uh, the passage immediately following this where one of the demons that Jesus is expelling recognizes him. And you can see through the text that Jesus can see in the face of the man or the demon that that recognition happens and Jesus makes him be silent. Not to save the man from being tortured, of course that's part of it, but don't tell these people that you know me. Don't tell these people who I am. You'll ruin the story. <laughs> <laughs> However, Jesus sees in the faces of all of these people, family. The Virgin Mary comes to him with her other children and says, Son, lay off it. You're 31, you need a break, get a hammock, go lay by the Sea of Galilee and rest. Because Jesus had been casting out demons, one after the other after the other, for an extended period of time, and he was exhausted. The crowds are pressing in. He can't eat. He can't sleep. People want to know what he's doing. And he sends them away. He says, who are my mother and my brothers? It's all of these people who are also children of God. And I want to circle back to the collect for today, because I trust in the wisdom of the makers of our lectionary. You see, they could have chosen another gospel for today's appointment, but they chose this one. There's no rule that says that every piece 
of gospel text has to make its way onto the Sunday lectionary. In fact, there are lots of chunks of the Bible that don't make it onto a Sunday. They bury it in a Thursday night in hopes that <laughs> the preacher won't complain too much. But this one was chosen specifically for a Sunday and chosen for proper four, which happens every year. Proper one, two, and three don't always happen based on the lunar calendar. But this is one that we address every marked year. Why? Let's go back to the collect. We pray to God, acknowledging his never-failing providence. And then we ask him to put away from us all hurtful things. I think the wording of that phrase is really, really important. Put away from us all hurtful things. Not stop all hurtful things. Not keep everything bad ever from happening to us. Because that's an impossible ask. But we entreat you, O oh God, to put away from us all hurtful things and give us those things which are profitable for us. Profitable in this case meaning for our good and for the good of all God's children. And I keep coming back to that portion of the psalm that says the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. Because I think that's the point that Jesus is making here. In his exhaustion, in his hunger, in his overwhelmedness, which is now a word. In his overwhelmedness, he looks out at these people who are clamoring for God's love. And he says, you are my mother, you are my brother, you are my sister. At other points in some of the Pauline letters, we hear Paul describe us as co-heirs with Jesus to eternal salvation. And that's exactly what's happening in today's gospel. That's what's happening in the psalm. It's what they're clamoring for in the book of Samuel. We want to be children of God. And that's the good news today, my friends, we are. Jesus has claimed us as his brother, as his sister, as his sibling, as his mother. And I can't think of a more perfect way to springboard into Pentecost. Amen. Our service today continues with a proclamation of our faith, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, God the Father, the, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light. True God and true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. Accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come from again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge the baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people today are a free offering. You may pray for anyone or anything that you choose, either aloud or in the silence of your heart. We pray in thanksgiving for uh, the 30th wedding anniversary that Everett and I are celebrating this week. For Peter.
pray for my grandson who just graduated from college and uh, is looking for work. For the peace of Jerusalem. I ask your prayers for the people who have died from shootings of all sorts, but especially those who were shot in mass murders and for their families. O oh Lord God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercy, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and we give you glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with a confession on the bottom of your bulletin. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have done in our conduct. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And that also with you. Feel free to greet one another with a holy elbow or a wave or a hug if you live together. I believe we have only one brief announcement, although if I've missed something, someone please shout it out. Um, a special thanks to Haywood Alexander, who is tickling the ivories for us today. It is marvelous, as usual. Any other announcements other than please bring friends to church next week? Well, every week, really, but next week in particular, as we have company. All right. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, and make good your vows to the Most High. a brief note that we will sing the Sanctus, so if you have your music sheet flipped to the Sanctus at that point, it will be very obvious what to do. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O Lord, our God. For you are the source of light and life, and you made us in your image, and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you with joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs>
give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, but above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. In these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember, we remember his, his death, death, we proclaim his, his resurrection, we await his coming to the world, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
communion prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our final hymn today is hymn number 620. Hey, would help me with the verses. One, two, and five. Verses one, two, and five. <laughs> Thanks be to God. God.